As you might guess, if I'm making a video about it, road safety is all about physics. There's loads of physics involved in the decisions that the government makes about road safety. Firstly, well, when the road or any surface is icy, you get less friction between the tyres and the road surface. So we don't say less grip. A lot of students want to write in their answers less grip because grip is when you're actually closing your something around it, you're actually tightly compressing something and that's providing that extra friction. Does not let the tyres grip. The next bit of physics, and it's often going to be used as a context for understanding your other physics road safety. Well, why is it that the roads themselves aren't covered in ice but the pavement I'm walking is? Well, it's because the road has been gritted. Grit is not an extra something to give you extra friction. It is actually salt, and salt changes the melting point of water. So it could be about that uh, whole latent heat section of your physics GCC. So the main context would be about stopping distances. And we talk about the stopping distances on ice being 10 times what they are on a dry road. I'm actually on a really icy patch of pavement here, so I've got really low friction between my feet and the snow. And every time I push off, I haven't got any force to oppose my the force that I push with, and it means I just slip. So that's the context of Newton's third law. So what is stopping distance? Well, stopping distance is the, the sum of the thinking distance, which is the distance the car travels whilst you're actually considering whether you should be braking or not, so while you're reacting to a hazard, let's say, and the braking distance, which is the distance that the car travels whilst the brakes are actually being applied. When you're braking on ice, you've got much less friction, so there isn't that force to provide a resultant force to actually slow you down. So you need to leave yourself much more of a distance uh, to do that work to slow your car down. So that's using the equation, work done is force times distance. Loads of physics involved in road safety and it's a context that they like to test out your other physics knowledge on. Of course, there's collisions now. A lot more collisions on a road in icy conditions like this because of those reasons, because people aren't leaving enough of a distance between them and the car in front, it tends to be that people just drive exactly as they would normally without really changing their driving to the conditions. That's the tip for you when you get to be 17 years old and start driving. Always drive to the conditions. But what are collisions all about? Well, collisions are about the conservation of momentum. So when two cars collide, then the momentum before the collision, so whatever the mass times of velocity was before the collision, is equal to the momentum after the collision. And normally we're talking about two cars colliding and like sticking together and becoming one mass that has the same momentum as before the collision. It's another icy little section for me to walk on. And of course, whenever you're walking around, you're thinking of Newton's pairs, aren't you? Newton pair forces. So here's a video on momentum and collisions. Here's a video on stopping distances in GCSE physics. And the last is a group of safety features, the in-car safety features. And they're all about Newton's second law. And Newton's second law you can call F equals MA, or force is a rate of change of momentum, so we say delta P over T. And they're actually the same equation, it's just, uh, it's just derived in a different way. And they're more useful for explaining different things. So, Uh, so most of the in-car safety features we do those equations to actually explain them so the first one let's talk about the crumple zones at the front and back of the car that's going to be one of the main examples they're going to use in GCSE for you to apply that equation what happens when the crumple zone crumples is that the time of that collision is increased so all of that momentum the car had as it was traveling along is decreased at a slower rate so therefore the force is lower so a longer time at lower force because well that's how fractions work you could say that using the f equals ma by saying well the acceleration is smaller so the resultant force is smaller so the force is, is less then less 
change of shape of the things in the car, so i.e. the passengers and etc. The next two are seat belts and airbags and they're doing the same job. They are just increasing the length of time it takes to come to a stop. So your, your body has momentum, doesn't feel like it because relative to the car you're not moving but it has momentum. Hey Ellie, you right? And uh, your body has momentum. If we increase the time that momentum is reduced in, then we decrease the force acting on it. Ugh. Shh, didn't see, you didn't see. I, all right, I'll do a deal. I didn't see that. You didn't see that. Well, they also want you to know about factors that increase or decrease stopping distance. So you've got to think about them in two groups. Factors that increase thinking distance, factors that increase braking distance. So thinking distance is affected by things that affect your reaction time. So for example, tiredness, or drugs or alcohol, or distractions. Because generally anything which is going to increase the reaction time of the driver, age might be one of them. Well, that's a controversial issue. Or things that increase the braking distance, and that's going to be mechanical things considering we're talking about having to do mechanical work. Essentially, the car has kinetic energy and we're trying to transfer that kinetic energy into heating, basically into heating of the roads. Um, or we're trying to transfer that store of kinetic energy into a thermal store in the road and in the tires. And that comes down to mechanical things because to make that transfer, we're gonna do mechanical work. So it comes down to the quality of the tread on the tyres. Are they uh, are they well maintained? Have we got deep enough tread or are they worn out? Are they too smooth, those tyres? It looks. It's 1.6 millimetres, so well done this person. What about the quality of the brakes? Okay, it's all those, they're always mechanical factors. What about, is it, the reason I'm making this video today, the conditions of the road. But you've got to be specific. Don't just say the tyres, say worn tyres. Don't just say the conditions of the road, icy conditions or wet conditions, increase braking distance. And then there's this fascinating thing, which is that because it's kinetic energy, and that's proportional to speed squared, then if we double our speed, we've got four times the kinetic energy. Rather, so braking distance increases with the square of the speed. The thinking distance just increases proportionally with the speed. So that's the reason for this little graph that's always seen in the highway code. So that's car safety features. I'm at school now. That's the physics that these people who make these safety decisions for us have to base their decisions on. It's the physics that keeps us safe. It's all about dissipating the energy that you have, the kinetic energy that you have, when you're driving in a safe way so you get fewer injuries in collisions and also so you get fewer collisions in total. Well done this person, nice deep treads on the tyre. Well within the legal limit for tread depth. And tread depth is essentially so that the tyre can clear over the water or the snow so the actual rubber can actually meet the road and two surfaces produce that friction and allow you to stop or even to accelerate safely or to turn safely. Any, any situation in the journey where you need forces, a result of force, to make an acceleration. I'm Kit, it's been Gorilla Physics, road safety, all about you understanding more so you enjoy more. So get more confident, do better in those exams. <laughs>